This is uh, the most recent thing I've written. I wrote this two nights ago. Ah, uh, hell, now here's Johnny light my ass up like a Christmas tree blue and... Turns out he was running his switch. What the hell were you thinking, man? I gave you the chance of the false flag drop. Don't you ever take that bait. He's always fixing. Though I loved your survival moves a couple miles back there, but you just had to piss on my boots, didn't you, hippie? And damn if you ain't got a boatload of trouble and danger riding shotgun like living, breathing, moving contraband. And lucky for you, she's stoned out of her gourd. She doesn't see my leer, and ain't that too bad. So come on over here, freak show, so you can put your hand on my dick. And you best stroke it, good boy, and bring a smile to this brown Central Valley baked face, lest I be tempted to go frisk your rock star drama in there, and I'll be sure to wipe your shirt off with this used blue gasoline-smelling paper towel I picked up back there in Shasta, because you don't even know how long your day is about to get, baby. No, we never tell you this kind of shit when we see it leaking out the side of your hustle. Mm. <laughs> Interview with the poet. I sat down to interview the poet, and the poet said, Don't be fooled by the gorgeous bucolism of the rural countryside. It is trying to kill you. Don't be fooled by the homicidal faints of the big city. Really, it's just lonely and looking to take someone home tonight. Most big city murders are the product of buyer's remorse or paranoia. A crime of passion is much more frightening and desperate and likely to happen in a moment of terrible beauty. City people take their kids to the zoo to demonstrate a facsimile of nature, which only really happens when nature breaks free for a couple of hours during Christmas Day, when somehow all the animals are turned loose from their cages to experience their own facsimile. I checked my watch to find that 20 years had gone by I wondered if the poet and I were now common-law married. I couldn't remember if the poet and I had copulated and then realized it didn't much matter as these matters ago whether or not the poet and I had copulated. The important point was that we shall all know our passing by the last gaggle of photons arriving for Lodin before they pulsate and fragment away. Mm It's also a really new poem, New Dog, Old Tricks. This is the first time reading this, this will be weird. It rains less and less here in California. When it can finally be bothered to precipitate again, it always comes in the dark of morning, in furious dashes of whipping sheet water, curtains unfolding across the piss and shit baked city. Always in the dark of morning, when it's me and the hound out on patrol. We knew what we were in for. It had to be done. But nothing can prepare you for this kind of dowsing. The hound in his floral print raincoat, the indignity of it emphasizing his sad beagle eyes, me in a leather football helmet, and three of the bulkiest cotton layers laying around that I could pile onto my barrel chest, all of it useless beneath the wide open faucet of heaven. You learn to keep moving in this rain. Even the marking hound knows this. Don't stop. Don't ever stop. Long enough to let the chill hook its tendrils into your angel tears, running across your forehead and down your cheek as if they were a defective car windshield with demented windshield wipers. Never let the unnatural caress of an elemental turn cold when in the midst of travailing, the destination is the thing. And even the marking hound knows this to be true. Do you want to fuck me? Will it be you who takes responsibility for this wreckage? Peel me of these dirty night clothes and fold them along their creases. Run your supple fingers along my thick, rough stretch marks, now swollen with spent semen. They still writhe with an empty palm. Mop up the rivulets of pus still leaking from my swollen groin, which now resembles a pallet of undercooked pounded flesh run through the mill a few too many times. 
that has been sifted through the rusty holes. Will it be you who takes thread to needle and delicately stitches me back together again? That part that throbs beneath a layer of skin that grins from hip to aching purple hip. Bind my weeping nipples, clad them down into my breasts with your subsidized bars of convention. Go ahead, gather up my regrets like a wilted bouquet of weak old flowery sentiment, this nasty little hospital bouquet sent by your mom. Go ahead and scrub away the damage caused by your cock because this ain't no romantic titanic waiting to be resurrected by a weepy-eyed scientist looking for a heart of blue. My cunt is a mess and my mind much worse. It's chunky and bleeding and unbandageable. Will it be you who pulls me out of this mess, this grave? You still want to fuck me? The fear of time. My child, my body, we are NATO warriors, tied by time. Our private moments that are strung between our eyes as a tightrope of promise, it's whispered and guardless, a never-ending bond in jagged nights, softened by darkness where we touch. We touch with constructed, sealed skin, fresh from the ocean. Across seas and an ocean, a grill that cooked with you. Split our time between the hot dogs and the buns. to give me a seat. 